Two Series Coupe was a car BMW couldn't afford to compromise with the front-wheel drive system that it fits to its other compact models and to other Two Series variants. So instead, in this second generation G42 version, we have a standalone design that continues the great tradition of the Munich makers' smaller sporting cars. The G42 era two series coupe is one of those cars that just feels right within the first 50 meters, whichever version of it you happen to have chosen. As with this model's E82 and F22 series predecessors, drive dynamics are key, whichever of the engines uh, happens to suit your budget or your preference. The foundation here lies with BMW's decision not to switch to the front-driven platform these days used by all its other compact models. Instead, this second-generation 2 Series Coupe gets a shrunken version of the CLAR chassis used for the company's middle-ranking 3 and 4 Series models. That's welcome, not only because it means this car can be predominantly rear-driven, but also because it enables it to offer another very BMW-style feature that you wouldn't normally now find on one of its smaller cars, a throaty straight six-cylinder engine. Uh, here fitted to the 374 horsepower M240i variant we're testing today. This gets the brand's X-Drive four-wheel drive system, but you'll be limited to a rear-driven setup if you opt for one of the more affordable four-cylinder two-litre models, which are further down the range. Uh, there are three of these, two with petrol power, uh, the 184 horsepower 220i and the 245 HP 230i, and a diesel, the 190 horsepower 220d. Whatever engine's chosen, uh, for likely customers, rewarding handling will be a must. So, a great deal of work has gone into the G42 engineering formula here to make sure that's delivered. Uh, wider tracks, carefully adjusted wheel camber values, and a 12% increase in static torsional rigidity are all crucial here. So is a return to the classic 50-50 weight distribution. The previous generation, the F22, uh, was 47-53. Much too has been borrowed from the engineering introduced into the current 4 Series Coupe, uh, notably what BMW calls lift-related dampers. They provide extra damping to control body movement over large bumps and to better settle the car uh, through the corners. On top of that, there's uh, lower ride height, there are firmer springs and anti-roll bars, plus this coupe gets a clever double-jointed spring strut front suspension and a five-link rear axle. We would like a bit more feel from the variable sport steering and on this M240i you really need to find the extra for the M adaptive suspension package, otherwise it's all good. Uh, there is a bit of extra weight to go along with all this uh, second generation models updates, particularly on this uh, six cylinder X-Drive model, but it's not enough to significantly detract from a very decent looking set of efficiency stats. Uh, the 220i version that most will choose uh, manages up to 44% Point one miles per gallon on the combined cycle and up to 145 grams per kilometer of CO2. It is recognizably a two series coupe but this time a slightly larger and certainly more modern looking one. There's no convertible body style option this time around and the coupe we're left with is uh, now a meaner, more aggressive looking thing. You wouldn't call it pretty but equally you wouldn't mistake it for anything else. A defiantly niche is the phrase BMW uses. Time to take a look inside. At the wheel here, you certainly now feel like you're in a more sophisticated and upmarket car. And in some ways you are, because compared to a 4 Series model, the cabin architecture is almost identical. Only the door cards are actually bespoke to this design. Not that you'd really care, because there's more of an executive vibe than is usually offered by a small BM, with the high center console creating a cocooning feel around both front seat occupants, which is totally appropriate to the kind of car this is. The shrunken CLAR platform that this G42 model is now based on can't support the cutting edge media tech that you'll find in the Munich Maker's other more recent small models, but the standardized live cockpit professional package that you get here will still seem like quite a step up for customers graduating on from the previous F22 series design. A 12.3 inch monitor replaces the previous model's analog dials in the instrument cluster and a bigger 10.25 inch uh, center dash iDrive infotainment display is now much better integrated into the center of the fascia. 
What else might you need to know? Uh, maybe that the redesigned sports seats are much improved and an optional head-up display is new to this model line. Uh, your over-the-shoulder view that is as slightly restricted as it always is on a coupe, but there's a whole bank of extra tech to help you slot into spaces. And plenty of storage room too in the now more spacious cabin. Time to take a look in the rear. Well, once inside, there's far more room than you'd have any right to expect from anything calling itself a coupe. Well, a two-door one anyway. A headroom here would obviously be better if the ceiling height was the same as it is in the front. But even so, most adults will fit in fine. And there's room for your elbows, thanks to these scalloped out side panels. BMW obviously thinks that real people are going to regularly sit back here because it's rather curiously standardised three-zone climate control across the range. And that means that you get these uh, digital temperature gauges here between the uh, twin central vents. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Uh, BMW hasn't bothered with pointless electrical operation for this lid, and it rises to reveal a 390 litre capacity, which is the same as that of the previous generation model. Uh, instead of the ski hatch, which was provided on the previous generation model, there's now a more flexible 40-20-40 split for the rear backrest, so long items like skis can be pushed forward into the cabin between a couple of rear seated occupants. Lots of ways then that you can practice justify what is essentially a deliciously selfish sports car. It'll certainly help BMW that uh, this car doesn't really have many rivals which are directly able to square up to it. Affordable rear-wheel drive models like Toyota's GR86 don't have the quality or the necessary range of engine options either. Audi's TT Coupe has reached the end of its life. A front or four-wheel driven hot hatch really isn't quite the same and something like a Porsche 718 Cayman is just too expensive. To its credit, BMW has produced an old school performance coupe with bang up to date values. Uh, this is a car which is particularly addictive if you can stretch up to a six cylinder version like the one we have here. In summary, this G42 design two series coupe is indeed, as its maker claims, defiantly niche. Ultimately, this is the kind of car that BMW does better than almost anyone.